In the opening scene of episode 4 of Bochi the Rock, viewers can see a scene where Rio was standing in the pouring rain. Her eyes were fixated on a poster that features her old band, the Hamakatata, which consisted of three members, including Rio herself. While it wasn't clear how they looked like in the anime, it was shown more clearly in the manga. In the same episode, the poster appears again when Kesaku Band is searching for a location for their promotional photos. Kida was the first to suggest taking a photo on the spot because of all the posters, which give off a real Shimokatazawa vibe. Oh, hi. At this moment, Ryo reveals that the place was a CD shop that she used to come a lot, leading to speculation that Ryo may have practiced with her old band at the same CD shop. The CD shop's name can be observed as Berlin Records based on the closing notice. The poster was partially obscured by Ryo's hand, leaving only the word STA visible. However, in later episodes, it is revealed that Kida also has the same poster hanging in her bedroom, and from this, it is discovered that the full word of STA is Starry. It is known that Najika recruited Ryo after she left her previous band. However, based on the information from Ryo's old band poster, there is a possibility that Najika may have first seen Ryo performing with her old band at Starry. As a side note, it's possible that Kida, being a fan of Ryo, was already aware of the significance of the CD shop and intentionally led the group to take photos there. Interestingly, Kida had previously mentioned that she first became captivated by Ryo's playing when she saw her perform on the street. There is a chance that the street Kida referred to as the same one where the CD shop is located. Yeah! And it is important to note that Kida's apology for being insensitive could be insincere or merely an act. This theory is supported by a similar situation in which Kida made the Kasaku band perform at the school festival. I still believe that Kida is a good person, and there may be a valid reason for her choosing that particular spot. <laughs> If you pay close attention, you will notice that Bochi was not present in that scene as she was visiting another wall before returning to Najika and giving her an unintentional jump scare. <gasps> Bochi mentions that she found a great location for taking photos and funnily enough, she demonstrated it through pantomime. Following their photo shoot, Najika and the band were going through the pictures they had taken. As they swiped through the images, Najika couldn't help but comment on how effortlessly cute Kida looked in every single photo. Kida, seemingly nonchalant about it, mentioned that she was used to uploading her pictures on Instagram. Without hesitation, she pulled out her phone and showed the band her account, Kida0421, with a staggering 593 photos. After seeing Kida's account, we see one of the most famous scene in Bochi the Rock, the glitching Bochi. As a matter of fact, Bochi's voice actress did the scream without any editing. This impressive feat was demonstrated once again in Bochi the radio podcast. After taking some pictures, Kida suggested taking a jumping picture, which Ryo responded to by commenting on how any anime with a jumping sequence in the opening is considered a top-tier anime. This statement specifically referred to the Karara jump, a common element found in Moe anime openings, where the cast jumps together as a group. This jump was first popularized in the anime k which shares the same theme as Bochi the Rock in being centered around a band. It was further emphasized in the manga with Kiraran as the translation when they jumped. During a photo shoot, Najika expressed her reluctance to include any instruments in the photo. She believed that it would be uncool to just bring her drumsticks without any accompanying instrument. It is worth noting that the instruments used by the characters in the show are not just props, they are genuine brands. This happened because those brands are sponsors for Bochi the Rock anime. Also, the instrument they are using are sold in real life and they are actually really expensive. Najika's impressive Imperial Star drum kits comes with a hefty price tag, which is about $1,000. And Rio's high-end Fender American Professional Bass is even more expensive, costing around $1,800. Kida's Gibson Les Paul Jr. guitar, which was originally owned by Rio and got lent to Kida, also has a high value of approximately $1,600. Not to mention, Ryo also purchased Kida's bass guitar, which was mistakenly bought and costs about $1,200. By the way, using the price of Kida's bass guitar as a reference, we can calculate her monthly allowance to be approximately $48 or 6,400 yen, as she used two years' worth of her allowance and her New Year's money to pay for it. It was assumed that the New Year's money was equivalent to one month's allowance.
In total, Rio spent an impressive sum of about $4,600 on her musical instrument, which is still logical considering her parents owned a hospital. <laughs> However, this still pales in comparison to the cost of Bochi's guitar. Although its design is similar to the guitar used by Kida, Bochi's Gibson Les Paul guitar is not the junior version and is valued at a whopping $6,000. It is revealed in the manga that her father purchased it for 500,000 yen or around $3,800, as it is a reissued model. Returning to the earlier scene, during their photo session, their first jumping photo revealed Bochi's panties, as pointed out by Najika. This detail was not depicted in the anime adaptation, but it was shown in the manga. Additionally, it is worth noting how Kida appeared to be ecstatic when she held Ryo's hand. After taking some good photos, Kita mentioned that the Kesaku band was finally starting for real, but Najika pointed out that they didn't even have their first song yet. While Bochi was lost in thought, Ryo suddenly disappeared into a thin air. She ran away when they mentioned about the song, possibly feeling partially responsible for the situation. Bochi was once again covered by self-doubt about her song lyrics, and she was hesitant to show them to anyone. She ultimately decided to share them with Ryo, and it was the right decision. When Bochi first mentioned that she would write the most band-like music and guarantee them a huge hit, Ryo immediately sensed that something was off. <laughs> this was likely due to Ryo's past experience with her previous band that prioritized profit over honesty in their music. By the way, it's worth noting that Ryo's display picture is a capture, a monster from the popular video game series Final Fantasy. As Bochi asked to meet Ryo, Ryo responded that she was currently at a fancy cafe. The question remains, since she was totally broke, was she really at that fancy cafe at that moment? <laughs> what if she assumed that Bochi would pay for her meal and chose an upscale location? Or even worse case, did she already plan to dine and dash from the start? We can see that Ryo left the place without paying until Bochi reminded her about the receipt. <laughs> But, if her intention was to dine and dash, it would have been a poor decision to choose the seat farthest from the door as her escape route. Bochi found herself in a difficult situation when she couldn't say no to Ryo's request and ended up paying for her meal. Although Ryo promised to repay her, it was clear that she had no intention of doing so. When the Kesaku band visited Anashima Shrine, rode the escalator, and bought ice cream, once again, Ryo made Bochi pay for her. Fortunately, Seika intervened and caught Ryo in the act, making her pay her debt to Bochi. Ryo paid Bochi back with 1,016 yen using a combination of 10 yen, 5 yen, and 1 yen coins, as well as a 1,000 yen paper bill to settle the payment. Bochi's statement upon entering the cafe was Are you winning diners? which is actually referring to the popular meme Are you winning son? In the official translation, it was initially Boss, are you still open? This phrase is commonly used in Japan when people enters an izakaya, which is a type of Japanese pub. Upon showing Ryo the book, Bochi initially thought Ryo was shocked by the lyrics she made, but Ryo's attention was actually drawn to the signature page. <laughs> when Bochi was creating her signature, she referred herself as Gochi. While it may seem like a combination of Godo and Bochi, it's actually a reference to Masafumi Godo, who is also known as Gochi when Masafumi started a solo project. After Bochi showed Ryo the lyrics page, Ryo reads it and asked Bochi if she actually satisfied with it. Bochi said that she write that because she thought she should write something like what famous bands do. Ryo later told Bochi about Ryo's past and asked her to not abandon her uniqueness. Ryo said, <laughs> Ryo also advised Bochi not to write song based on other people's concerns, just write what she wanted to write. Upon hearing this, Bochi realized her mistake and finished the lyrics the next day after scrimming a whole night. Although Ryo described the lyrics as a downer, she liked them because they were honest, which made Bochi very happy. <laughs> Bochi also received promotional photos, which she printed and posted all over her room. We can estimate the size of Bochi's room by counting the number of pictures on the wall. Leave in the comment below on how big you think Bochi's room is. <laughs> that concludes the facts about Bochi the Rock. If you found it enjoyable, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. See you in the next episode.